Hey guys, good afternoon. Let me ask you a question. How many among you have had an idea just to realize shortly after that someone had already done it, that someone had already had the same idea? Please, raise your hands. Quite a few among us, right? My name is Daniel Ospina. Ever since I was born, I was interested in ideas on how they are created how they're implemented. And that led me to become a chef. But I'm not a chef anymore. Why? Because I'm frustrated. Because I was severely frustrated seeing too much potential, too much opportunity, and too much talent wasted. Wasted in our organizations. Wasted with people who go to work every morning and waste their ideas. Let me give you a personal example. A few years ago, I was working in this R&D laboratory. It was meant to be a very innovative, a very creative place. We used to design meals for astronauts, play with liquid nitrogen, and then make things explode. It was great. <laughs> While being there, one day someone from another department approached me and said, hey, we know you guys at the lab are working on a soft drink menu, and we have an idea for it. How about a pumpkin and mandarin juice? Okay, sounds fairly original, right? It turns out it's delicious, but we didn't know that at the time. So at least I thought that was very creative. So I went and told the woman who was managing the project, hey, these guys came with this idea. She put her hand in her pocket, pulled out a list, and showed me the second entry, which read pumpkin and mandarin juice. Somehow, these two people have had the same idea roughly at the same time. And it was a problem. What was I going to say? Was I going to attribute the credit to one of them and not the other? Was I going to say great minds think alike, but actually we probably don't need both your minds at the same time? Problematic, right? On another occasion, we even wasted six months and quite a bit of budget coming up with the same breakthrough innovation that our competitor in a completely different country did. Again. What do you do when all your people are coming up with the same creative solutions to a problem in the same way? So, worried about this issue, I start to look a little bit deeper. The first idea was, let's look into innovation and let's look into design. There is quite a bit of theory there that perhaps can help us. So, if we look at the most basic of it, innovation can be conceived as a dual process. On one side, you have a divergent process where you generate several ideas, and then you have a convergent process where you select among those ideas which ones to take further, which ones to experiment with or test or implement. And then both those processes overlap and they can even go in cycles. And the higher the diversity of ideas, the bigger the chance you have of retaining something original going all the way to implementation. Except that this framework doesn't explain why different people are coming up with the same idea at the same time. So, again, I had to go a little bit further. Thankfully, some friends at the Experimental Psychology Department of Oxford and at the Institute of Philosophy of London University had a different set of theories. And upon discussing and researching a bit, they tell me that neuroscience says that the way we generate ideas is by combining information from our surroundings and our memory banks into new combinations. Which means that if we're all being exposed to the same sources of information, to the same sources of inspiration, chances are we're going to end up coming up with a combination that is the same thing that everyone else. At the conscious level, when we go about convergence, the ideas that we retain is fairly simple. We have some possibilities, we cross some off, and then we see which ones to take further. The issue is that this is also happening constantly at the unconscious level. Except that there, we're not even aware that we're making a choice. We're not even aware which were the other possibilities we chose among. This is, for example, what happens, say, on a Sunday morning. Your day off, when you wake up, you leave your house, and suddenly you realize you're walking towards work. You weren't expecting to go to work. You didn't even realize you were making that choice, and you don't know which other possibilities you chose among. 
Your brain just automatically did it. So, but don't take my word for it. Let me show you how it works in detail. All of you should have the paper strips, right, in your hands. Take them, give them a good sniff right now, please. They are scented. Help me. Does any of you get that peachy, fruity note, perhaps a little bit gummy, bass? Is it there? Good. How about coconut? Does it remind you of sun cream, perhaps of going to the beach, of holidays? Or how about butter? Is there something toasty, creamy? What is, ha what is happening? Is that when we're exposed to the same source of influence, we see only one phase of reality. What you have in your hands is a single molecule. It's called delta decalactone. It's one of over 800 molecules that compose a simple smell, such as a peach. Yet, by being surrounded by one influence, our brains are primed to reach the same conclusion. So what does this tell us? It tells us that we need diversity. We need diversity in our lives, we need diversity in our teams, and we need diversity in our workplaces if we are to generate original ideas. And I don't mean only sex and age and race. These are important. But beyond that, we need deep diversity. We need people who have different preferences, different habits, different tastes, different thought patterns. Otherwise, we end up reaching the same conclusions. And then, once we have this diverse group of people, we need, we need them to understand each other. We need them to communicate, to collaborate, and build on each other's idea instead of backstab them. And this comes in stark contrast to the way most of our organizations are designed these days. They tend to be rigid, tend to give people very precise instructions instead of tease their curiosity. And what's the result? Boredom. So millions and millions of people looking through the window wishing it was Friday night or 5 p.m. so they can get home. Not helping us. Even worse, as technology advances and we talk about automation, we realize that the way we have been conceiving our organizations was great for the industrial era. But then it's no surprise that so many of us can be replaced by computers, since we're only doing repetitive tasks. Instead of tapping onto the unique human potential to combine different sources of information into new ideas. And the result is products that we can barely turn apart. So similar that the only way we differentiate them is through convenience or price. What happens then that those few cents that we try to shave to outcompete or competition end up being at the cost of women, children, underserved nations and the environment. And at the same time, we burn dollars, we burn our budgets on marketing, on bland advertising, trying to associate with needs that we don't need, and at the same time, our R&D leads us nowhere. We need to design different organizations to enable deeply diverse people to come together and discuss. For that, we need to stop thinking of organizations in terms of hierarchies, and we need to stop thinking of organizations in terms of transactional networks. Instead of that, we need to emphasize what brings us together as a higher goal and the relationships that we can create. We need to think of organizations in terms of movements and communities. And for that, we need everyone to step up, to change the psychological contract they have with their peers and take responsibility for coming up to this collective. From my side, we're doing two things. We have created a global community is open, and it will be with pleasure that I'd like to invite you to join us. What we do, we bring together scientists, artists, designers, entrepreneurs to discuss problems and solutions across fields, across industries, and across disciplines. And then, as well for the organizational level, we have created Conductal. We try to enable corporations and startups alike to think differently to create environments that are conducive to collaboration, that are led by curiosity. While well, that curiosity and those, those initial moments of wonder can be systemically translated into innovations that not only improve efficiency, but as well result in radical innovation. So if I started this with a question, 
let me invite you to ask a question in turn. Next time that you are in your workplaces, ask your colleagues, ask your friends, what are your favorite hobbies? What is your favorite TV show? What do you do? What are you reading at the moment? And if the answers are roughly all the same, if you as well as are frustrated with the way our current organizations are and believe that we need to step up to overcome the challenges we're facing as a society and as a species, please reach out. It all starts with a conversation. Thank you.